say thank you. We say thank you that you are king, that you are Lord, that you are our savior, that you're alive, that you have made known to us the Father who is in heaven. And God, you sent your one and only son, Jesus Christ, to earth so that we could know you. And we say thank you. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of all of our worship. We say thank you again and again and again and again. And God, we could say it forever and it'll never be enough. We love you. We thank you. And all of God's children say amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together if you're glad to be in the house of God tonight. Make your way back to your seats. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm glad you made it to church tonight. Come on, give somebody a high five as you make your way back to your seats. I want to welcome everybody tonight, especially if you're at another campus. My name is Hai King, and I get to serve as one of the pastors here, and it's an honor to be with you guys here tonight. Uh, Anderson Campus, do me a favor. I want you to put your hands together and welcome everyone at every campus right now. Come on. We're so glad you guys are tuned in. I want to first welcome our first-time guests. I mean, we've had so many first-time students every week at Fuse over the past couple of weeks, and uh, we just want to say welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, this is the one moment throughout all, every Wednesday night where all of our campuses gather together. So whether you're here in Anderson, maybe you're in Clemson, maybe you're down in Hilton Head, maybe you're in Florence, wherever, you need to know that this thing, Fuse, is bigger than you. So New Spring Church is one church, many locations, across the state of South Carolina. So there are 14 campuses right now leaning in to this teaching that I'm about to deliver to you here in a few moments time. And so uh, I wanna welcome you here if it's your first time. One thing that you need to know about Fuse, you probably saw this on the logo, uh, it's some signage. Uh, when you see the word Fuse, on the outside what you will see are these two brackets. The reason why we have two brackets around the word Fuse is because we want for everyone to know that they belong at Fuse. So despite uh, our differences, despite where you come from, what you have and what you don't have, what we want you to know is when you come to Fuse, you belong. Can I get an amen, somebody? Uh, we're grateful you're here tonight. And so uh, we do things here in series. And what I mean by that is there are, are several different teachers who teach uh, each week. And uh, we teach through the Bible. This is God's word to us. Uh, we believe that God gave this to us, not just dropped it out of heaven, though he could have, but he used common people like you and I to write the goodness of who he is. He, he told specific people, hey, write these words down so that my people know who, who I am. And so we believe that the Bible is God's word, and this is how we get instruction for everything uh, in life. And so tonight we're in a series called Image of God. Everybody say Image of God. Image of God, where do we get that from? That comes from the Bible. It's literally on the first page in, in the book called Genesis, which literally means the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth, and he creates all the things in between, the, the planets, the stars, all the things that we see in the universe, God creates these things. Uh, what, what's unique is God creates you know, the day and the night, and then what we see is he creates animals, and then he gets to humanity. He gets to people like you and I, and he creates us. And he says these words in, in Genesis 1, 26. He says, let us, meaning him, we believe in God as a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, let us make man in our image. And this is simply known as the Imago Dei, and this is why we're in a series called Image of God, because we want for you to know Fuse, that we want you to, to see God, we want to see ourselves, and we want to see other people. That's what this series is about. We want you to see God, we want us to see ourselves, and we want to see others in the way that God creates us in our likeness. Tonight, specifically, we're going to talk about sons and daughters. Everybody say sons and daughters. I must tell you, Fuse, that uh, I've been following Jesus for quite some time now, and one of the hardest things for me to have had to overcome in my journey of, of following Jesus is this topic specifically. Because when I think of God as a father, oftentimes I think of him as my dad. I don't know how your relationship is 
with your dad, but I grew up in a, in a strict home. You guys have heard me say this uh, several times. I grew up in a strict home, so uh, when I would do things that were good, I would get celebrated, and when I would do things that were bad, I would get, I don't want to say a spanking. We call it a whooping in my hood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anybody ever had a good spanking? Somebody? Like, we call it a whooping. Who's ever had a whooping? You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, that's what we call it in my hood. So if I do something bad, I got a whooping. All right, don't make fun of the way I say that, okay? But listen, listen. It's so interesting because what I've realized in my journey of not only myself following Jesus, but as I've pastored young men and pastored young women, the thing that I always get back is, hey, I, I believe in, in Jesus and I, I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Holy Spirit, but it's hard for me to relate to uh, God as my father because I've never actually met my father. And I've sat across the table at coffees and lunches and I had to explain to young men and young women that who God is isn't who your earthly dad is. But then again and again, young men and young women will say to me, I feel like if I do good, then God will bless me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like as soon as I leave Fuse, I get back into the same lifestyle that I was in before I went. And I just feel like God is, is ashamed of me and uh, that he wants to discipline me and I want to get into this college, but I feel like I can't get in now because I let God down, and it becomes this performance thing. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations again and again and again with sons and daughters created in the image of God who believe that God himself is disappointed with them. I want to say to you tonight, Fuse, that I have good news for you, and, I'm, and the good news that I'm going to give to you is not something that I have written myself. Actually, I'm going to take us to the Bible uh, and tell you about a guy who writes something to us, and it's by this guy named John. So uh, if you have your Bible, I'm going to invite you to turn to uh, 1 John chapter 3. And if you don't, we're going to be taking notes. You maybe got one of these papers when you came in. This is just an easy way for you to take notes. But I'm going to ask you, Fuse, if you don't mind, just for the next couple of moments that we have, if you would take notes, that you would lean in, I believe that God has something he wants to say to you tonight as a son or a daughter. So we're going to be in 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3, but before I read it, I want for you to know about this man named John. John was a common guy like you and I. He was a fisherman. Anybody in the room like to fish? Whether you're in this room or the other campuses, I'm a fisherman. I'm a bass fisherman. Uh, I'm seeking to catch a 10-pound bass, so if you know where I can find one, DM me on Instagram, and I'm coming to hang with you, okay? Uh, We're going to go fishing, all right? But listen... John is a common man. He's a fisherman, but here's what you also need to know. John was best friends with Jesus. Who would love to be uh, best friends with Jesus, right? Come on, sign me up, somebody. Well, there's good news for you. Listen, here's what John says to us in 1 John chapter 3 about the Father. Listen, it says this. See what kind of love the Father has given to who? Us. That we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world, the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. Everybody say now. now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And every one who thus puts hope in him purifies himself as he is pure. See what kind of love. What is love? This is the question in society. This is the question that many people have been asking for thousands of years. What is love? Some say that it's emotion. It's it's a feeling. You do something for me. I do it for you. I love you. I just want to tell you, Fuse, I am one of those people who tells everyone I love you. I'm just one of those weird people. It could be the first time that I meet you. I'm like, I love you. That doesn't give any definition, though, right? It's just words. But, God, but the Bible says that God gives us a, a, a kind of love. What is this kind of love? Well, I want to tell you in the original language, in the Greek, everybody say Greek. In the Greek language, this word meant agape. Agape. It's up here on the screen. Here's the definition. It's God's self-giving, no strings attached, covenant love. I'm going to say it again, agape love. This is what love means. God's self-giving, no strings attached, 
covenant love. Isn't that good news? Like, could you think the love that you would want your friends to have for you? It's this, self-giving, no strings attached. I do something for you, you're, I'm not expecting you to do it for me. Like, I, I just give you love. It's, it's the essence of, of a person. But here's what the Bible says in 1 John 4. After he says this in chapter 3, he says this in uh, 1 John 4. John says this, anyone who does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. Think about that. God is love. In this love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world. Anybody know who that son was? Jesus. 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 He sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Think about this for a second. God who is in heaven sends his son Jesus to earth and because he sends his son Jesus to earth, we now know him. And because we know Jesus, we now know God himself. This is what the Bible is telling you and I. This is why it also says in John 3.16, which is the most popular verse in Christianity. What is it? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Eternal life. This is agape love. There are several different types of love in Scripture, just like there are in society. But I want you to know that the special kind of love that God has for you and I as sons and daughters is agape love. It's not about your work. It's about his works. It's not about what you do. It's about what he's done. It's not about who you are. It's about who he is. Can I get an amen, somebody? I want to summarize it in saying it this way. God's love is given to you son or daughter, so that he may grow in you. I'm going to say it again. God's love is given to you, son or daughter, so that he may grow in you. This is good news for you and I. God doesn't just give you his love and then leave and go away. No, he gives you his love so that you can know who he is. And as you know who he is, then he grows you as a son or a daughter. He doesn't leave you as an orphan. This is why it's difficult for, for you and I. If we're not careful, we will put our baggage of our earthly fathers on him. But I want for you to know that we have a God who takes the, his son who is perfect and places him on us. So the moment that you and I confess him as Lord of our lives, we are in right relationship with God himself. And because of that, you and I not only get to experience this love, we get to grow in this love. But I don't want to just stop there. I want to tell you there's three specific ways that you and I can grow in this love. And it's good news for you and I. The first way that you and I can grow in this love is this. God loves, grows your identity. Everybody say identity. 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 I'm holding here in my hand. Anyone know what this is? Driver's license. Okay. Who in here has a driver's license? Okay, hands down. Who in here wants to have a driver's license? Okay, I saw your face just light up, sweetheart. You're like, I mean. Okay, listen. I was thinking about this earlier. It's been about 20 years ago since I got this. Hello, I'm pretty old, all right? But listen, I got this uh, driver's license. You want to know how I got it? I had to get my permit first. I drove, yes. Before I, I, I was driving, I had to take a test. I had to study. Who likes taking tests in the room tonight? I hate them. I can't stand it. I got a confession for you. Listen, I think I failed my permit test the first time I took it, okay? So if you fail the permit test, I've got good news for you. You can still make it, all right? You take your permit test, then you go back, and then you actually have to drive to get your driver's license. Well, the reason why this is interesting is because the way that I am identified, especially in the world that we live in, if I get pulled over by a police officer, the first thing that he asks me for is what? Could I have your license and your registration? Why does he want my license and my registration? He wants to know my identification. He wants to know where I live. Am I a citizen in the United States of America? Do I live in South Carolina? He wants to see my address. He wants to see all of this documentation that tells him who I am, right? I just want to confess to you, the last time I got a speeding ticket was at the gauntlet. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. Listen. 
If you don't know what the gauntlet is, you need to go next year. It's our summer camp where all of our campuses come together. It's amazing. Listen, I'm driving down Clemson. I'm coming down the highway, and the cop doesn't care that I'm there praising Jesus. He just pulls me right on over, all right? He pulls me over. He's like, hey, you're, you're speeding. You're going a little too fast. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to worship Jesus with these students. He's like, I could care less. I need to give you a ticket. <laughs> so uh, he gives me a ticket. What I realized in that moment is the same thing that's true for us in our Christianity is the same thing that I experienced in life. The reason why I want for you to see 1 John 3, 1, let's see it again. It says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called, what? Children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Can I ask you, Fuse, do you know Jesus? Has he given you an identification of son or daughter? If God has given that to you, don't allow anyone else in society to speak identity into you. Because God has, because you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you no longer have to allow anyone to put a label on you, to identify you. You don't need a, a license to carry around with you. Because you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have been in right standing with God the Father. He loves you because he loves his son. And because he sees his son in you, no longer does he see the things in your past. No longer does he see the things in your future that are negative. He sees you rightly as he sees his son, Jesus Christ. This is why you and I need to grow in our identity. Why? Because here's what's interesting. Uh, in Matthew 3, 17, it says this, and behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. This is when Jesus was baptized, but you need to know this isn't the same baptism that you and I had because he didn't sin. But what you do need to know is at his baptism, it was before he did any ministry, before he did any work for the father, God looked at him and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, meaning the new identification that you and I have, when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he now sees you, son and daughter, and said, this is my son, this is my daughter, and whom I love, and I am well pleased. You need to know that this is your identity, but you also need to grow in it, because as you experience his love, it continuously grows you. Quick question for you. Have you ever confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. No, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to answer that out loud. Because listen, if you haven't, by the end of the night tonight, you're gonna have an opportunity to do so and God will change your identity and no one can take it away from you, amen? God not only wants to, his love not only grows your identity, God also wants to grow your maturity. Everybody say maturity. maturity. Listen to this. Here's what the scripture says. Again, here's what the scripture says. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we will see him as he is. Listen, Fuse, I've got two kids, okay? You guys have heard me talk about them before. Could I show a picture of my kids? Here we go. Wait for it. I threw them out of whack with the, the thing. This is my son and my daughter. I've got the best of both worlds. Aw. Okay, we're Clemson fans, yeah. All right. Okay, we can take the picture down. Y'all are distracted. They're so cute. If they stay up there much longer, I'll start crying, okay? Listen, I've got a son and a daughter, and one of the things that you need to know is when you have kids, you don't want them to grow up. <laughs> like, well, let me take that back. You want them to grow up from like birth to about three years old, and then from there, you just want them to stop. Okay, so all your parents would say to me, when they see me at church, what do they always say? Oh, your kids just grow like weeds. And before you know it, they're gonna be graduating high school, and they're gonna be in college, and you just wanna put them in a box so they don't grow up, right? And I'm, I'm telling you, I can have conversations after conversation with your parents, and they say this to me all the time. They just grow like weeds, they grow so fast. But what I've recognized is there's something wrong in the church where it feels like we wanna grow physically but we don't wanna grow spiritually. And what I'm saying to you is, is because you have an identity with Christ, what oftentimes happen is 
Because you have an identity with him, you just want to stop where you are and say, all right, God, I'm good. Like from now, I want to do my own thing. The, the reality is God doesn't want you to live that, that, that way. This is why he says, but know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. You've got your identity, but now it's time for you to grow in your maturity. You need to know my kids are very immature. They should be. They're five and six years old. If you guys were to hang with my kids, you wouldn't think they were very fun. If I were to hang with some of you, I wouldn't think you were very fun. I don't want to just sit around and play on the Xbox and PlayStation all day. I don't really care about Snapchat. I don't care about all these little things that you guys care about. Why? Because I'm mature. And there's going to come a time when you guys become mature and you're going to experience the same thing. But listen, in our spirituality, God wants us to grow in our maturity, maturity, and it's only going to come when we continuously experience his love over and over and over. I want to read something to you in 1 Peter 2. It says this, like newborn infants long for the spiritual milk, that by it they may grow up into their salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Can I just ask you, Fuse, have you tasted that the Lord is good? If so, then it's time for you to continuously grow in him by experiencing his love. Don't be one of these folks who can tell me when your salvation date was, but you can't tell me the last time you prayed. Don't be one of these folks who can tell me the last time that you came to church, but you can't tell me the last time that God spoke to you. I want to say this to you, Fuse. God loves you so much as his son and as his daughter that he doesn't want to leave you in your identity. He wants to grow you up in your maturity. What does it look like for you to be mature? Let me ask you a question. Do you have a a week-to-week relationship with God, but it needs to be changed to a daily relationship? Do you only come to Fuse on Wednesday night and count that as, hey, I'm growing in my relationship with the Lord? What I want to say to you is God wants to mature you and take you from a week-to-week relationship to a day-by-day relationship. Are you working and making money now, now that you're in high school and you're taking all of your money and doing all the things that you want to do it? Can I just tell you that if you're working, praise God, we need more workers in our community. But maybe a next step for you is not only to work and make your own wages, maybe it's for you, now it's time for you to honor God with your finances and tithe to the local church. If you don't know what that is, talk to your fuse pastor and know that if God can use you now to steward your finances and honor him first, he can do way more with the 90% than you can with 100%. What does it look like for you to mature in your relationship with Christ? Here's another question. Does your Instagram profile say that you're God's child, but your Snapchat DMs say that you're a person of the world? I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm saying that God's love wants to mature you. So if I were to look at your Instagram profile, does it only have a Bible verse and a couple of pictures that say that you're a Christian, but everyone that's in your high school, everyone that's in your locker room, see that you're people of the earth? Can they tell that you're someone different because you have a different identity, which then leads into more maturity? If that's not the case, God wants to make that true for you tonight as a son and as a daughter. If you struggle in your relationship with God because you feel like he's so distant, you feel like you can't do anything to receive his love, I want to remind you again that he's already given his love. There's no strings attached to it. But what does it look like for you to continuously grow in his love? The third and final point, God doesn't just want to give you identity. He doesn't want to just give you maturity. The third and final point is God's love grows your purity. Everybody say purity. Purity. Let's look at this verse again. 1 John 3, 3. What does he say? It says, and everyone. Wait, which people? The good ones? No. Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. What does that even mean? Who is purity? It's God. It's Jesus. It's him. He is pure. I think the reason why most of us don't understand what purity actually is, is because we treat purity as if we don't do something 
then we're pure. I think what the Bible wants us to see is that purity is less about not doing something and more about looking to someone. It's Jesus. So you think that because you came to a few service, you got saved, you feel new because you are new, then you leave, you get around your friends, you go back to the same lifestyle, and before you know it, you don't feel like you're growing in maturity, you're growing in more insecurity. And then you're trying to fight for purity because your body is telling you something, society is telling you something, and you're trying to fight for purity, but you're trying so hard not to do this thing. So your relationship comes to, hey, you know what? I've been clean for three weeks. I haven't done this specific sin. Because you haven't done this specific sin for a couple of weeks, you know what? I'm good now. I'm good. Not messing up again. Before you know it, you mess up again. Oh, you know what? I'm getting clean this time, man. I'm good. And then before you know it, eight days later, man, I messed up again. Why? You've taken your eyes off Jesus. You, you're focusing on this thing that you don't need to do. No, I just want to tell you, I don't know anything more pure than water. One. Two, the Bible says that Jesus came as living water. The Bible also says that he himself who looks to the, the purity, Jesus, purifies himself. This is an active thing. This is why you and I need to read the scriptures daily, not week to week. This is why we need to pray daily. This is why we need to be in community daily. Why? We're looking to him. Jesus, teach me. How do I do it? This is how. Stop looking to this thing that you feel like you've got to get away from. Look to him. This is why God sent him. This should be your new glasses. Everything you see, Jesus. Because the reality is when you look to him, You then see everything and everyone through him and not as him. What do I mean? Some of you, you see your college, the college that you want to get to as God. If I can just get that thing, I'll be good enough. Some of you, it's the driver's license. I get my new driver's license. I get a car. I'll be good. You know what? If I get in this relationship, I can promise you I'll be good. Nope. I've tried all of those things and more. The only thing that keeps me pure is the man, the God himself, the one who came from heaven to earth, the one who died died on our behalf, the one who lived a sinless life on behalf of a sinful people like myself, you and I, the one who not only died but resurrected and ascended into heaven. The more I look to him, I understand that I am his son. As I understand that I am his son, I grow in him. I become more pure. I don't have to fight to not do these things. I'm empowered by him, and I live a life that's pleasing to him. And I no longer have to worry about the relationship that I had with my dad as a kid and feeling like God is mad at me. No, I know that the Father loves me. Fuse, all I want for you to know is that the Father in heaven, he loves you. This is why he sent his son. If you don't know him, you can start a relationship with him in a few moments' time. But here's the other question. Maybe you're here at Fuse tonight. You feel like, hey, I've gotten away. You know, like I was close to Jesus at the gauntlet, but it's been a few weeks now. I just started school this week. Hey, let him grow you in your maturity. Maybe you need to go to, from confessing to friends to actually having accountability. What I mean by that is maybe you need to stop confessing your your sins to your friends and make sure that you have an actual fuse group leader who's gonna hold you accountable so that you don't just text your fuse group leader after you sin, you text him when you're feeling temptation so that he can help you overcome that sin. What else does he wanna do? Maybe he wants to purify you tonight. What does that look like for you? Maybe you haven't prayed in a long time. Maybe God wants to ignite your prayer life. Maybe you haven't picked up the Bible in a long time and he wants you to get back in the word of God again. No longer can we fuse, use our insecurities to say that we don't understand the Bible. I was one of them, one who grew up in remediation classes and couldn't read. Can I tell you now, I just can't get enough of this thing. This is what God wants for you and I. 
It's time for us to get serious about it because as we do, we are continuously reminded that we are his sons and we are his daughters. Amen? Can I pray for you, Fuse? Before I pray, I want you to just sit in a humble posture right there where you are. And I want to ask you a simple question. Has God revealed anything to you specifically tonight? Maybe you're here and you recognize, hey, I don't have an identity as a son or a daughter in God because I've never confessed Jesus as Lord in my life. Maybe your next step is to do that. Here's what I want to tell you. You read read the scripture just like I did. If you do that, you live an everlasting life. And the life that you can live here on earth is way bigger than what you can imagine and you do it for him. Maybe you're here and you need to grow up in your maturity and your relationship with the Lord. Maybe he's speaking into what does purity look like for you in this season? Stop looking to stop doing the thing and looking to more to him who is the one who can save you. So in this moment, a simple question I wanna ask. If you're here tonight, you don't have a relationship with God and you want one, you wanna start a relationship with him, allow him to change your identity. You realize that you're a sinner separated from God and you've had this view of him as a father who's mad at you, but you want him to be close to you tonight. If that's you, all you've gotta do is confess that Jesus is Lord and invite him to come into your heart and he'll make you new. If you're in the room tonight, wherever you are, and you want to give your life to Jesus, would you just simply raise your hand above your head? I'm not going to ask you to do anything else. Would you just raise your hand above your head and say, hey, I need a new identity. I need to start a relationship with Jesus. Raise it up, keep it up. Raise it up, keep it up. Raise it up, keep it up. For those of you who have your hands raised, I'm going to ask you to keep your hands raised. And here in a few moments' time, a leader is gonna tap you on the shoulder and just take you out and have a conversation with you to help you start a relationship with Jesus so that he can give you a new identity. Keep your hand up, please, wherever you are. Keep your hand up. Leaders, you can move now. Have conversation with students, please. Father, I just thank you right now in this moment that you're calling sons and daughters into your kingdom. Thank you for using my imperfections, a broken man like me, just to preach your gospel so that you can save sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. If you're in this space, you need to grow in your maturity. You need to grow in your purity by looking at him. I'm just going to invite you to stand to your feet. I'm going to pray over you before we go into worship. Come on, don't worry about who's looking at you. If you want to be serious about it and say, you know what? I need to grow in my maturity and I want to grow in my purity with him. Yeah, come on, just stand up to your feet. We're not going to worry about people looking at us because here's the reality. If you can't stand in the church, you're not going to be able to take a stand outside of it. And don't do this for attention, please. But if you're saying, hey, I want to take a next step in growing in my maturity with the Lord or I need to grow in my purity, I need to look to him. I'm going to pray for us. We're going to sing and worship together, our King. And we're going to sing and worship as sons and daughters because that's who we are now. Amen. So, Father God, we say thank you. Thank you that you are a good father who has good things for his children. God, we would never know you if it weren't for your one and only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, I thank you that you came, you lived, you died, you resurrected so that we can now have new life. God, I pray for every brother and sister of mine who's humbled themselves to stand, to say they want to grow in their maturity, they want to grow in their purity. God, I ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would reveal to them the next steps they need to take. Is it to have a conversation with a group leader? Is it to have a conversation with a friend who's beside me, a brother or a sister? God, whatever that next step looks like, I ask that your Holy Spirit would empower them to do it so that they leave change today, knowing that it is your love given to us so that you may grow in us. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Amen.